Okay, welcome back. So we've seen the basics of regression and, and how to do that using software. Right? We've seen these tools are pretty powerful, pretty useful, but we also know that they're they're very easy to misuse. All right, that's the big thing about regression. Okay, so we've hit on a couple of these things before. The main thing that we hit on is these basic methods that we're looking at are for linear regression. All right, so a lot of people just kind of want to jump ahead to letting the computer give spit all the numbers out and then using those numbers. All right, but really we have to confirm from the beginning visually we've got a linear path. All right, that's very important from the beginning. So don't just glance over that scatter plot. And make sure things look good there. All right, another thing here. And we've we've hit on this a lot of other stuff, and you've probably heard this before. But just because we found a correlation, it doesn't mean cause and effect. There's always the presence of of lurking variables and things like that. All right. So these first two points, I don't think we need to expand on very much. Right, but the things that we're going to introduce here, we don't want to do what's called extrapolation, and we also want to beware of influential points. So what is this thing called extrapolation? Alright, well remember in our example we use our regression equation to say okay well how long is this game gonna be if we use eight pitchers? We found it was about about a hundred and eighty minutes, about three hours. So what if we want to know, well, what's going to happen if 20 pitchers are used? Okay, so anybody who knows baseball, right, maybe think, okay, that's kind of a ridiculous number, right? Most clubs don't even carry that many pitchers. But plugging into many tab, here's, here's the numbers. Here's what it gives us. All right, so we've, we found this by plugging into our regression equation. Right? We can find this by plugging into that same equation. So this is telling us that the, we'd expect the game to be almost 300 minutes long, right? So what is that? Five hours. All right. So I think it's fair to do this, right? It's fair number one because that's a reasonable number of pitchers to use in a baseball game. If we're putting a little context to our example, right? But what about 20? Is that fair to do? Well, even if you don't know anything about baseball, let's look at the data. So remember our scatter plot looks like this. We had information what happens from what happens when two pitchers are used. Now that's that's kind of interesting because and this is an interesting example, right? Because two is the minimum amount of pitchers that could potentially be used, right? That means both pitchers through a complete game up to what happens when 13 14 pitchers are used. All right? So we know what's happening between 2 and 14. But is it fair to see what's happening at 20? Is that really useful? Right? Probably not, because number one, we're not sure that that linear pattern continues past 14, right? So, like I, as I mentioned, you know, most teams don't carry enough pitchers for for say there's two teams, that'd be 10 each. Teams don't carry that many pitchers, right? So, what if you started having position players playing and they were really bad and the game just got even longer, right? It started exponential. Or maybe it just levels off at some point. Right? So we don't number one, we don't know if that linear trend continues. Right? So that's one reason ex extrapolation isn't fair. And this idea of extrapolation is also a reason why we we mention the interpretation of our y-intercept isn't always useful. Because lots of times that y-intercept is extrapolation. Okay, so that's one thing we want to watch out for. Next thing we want to watch out for are the presence of what we would call influential observations. All right, so one way of defining an influential observation is a point that has a big effect on the calculation of that regression line. All right, so let's think about a new example here. So here we've got a scatter plot of the number of beers someone has drank and their BAC. Right? Obviously there we would think there would be a relationship. The more beer you drink, the higher your BAC. So do you see any points here that kind of stick out? Well, yes, 
here's a point that sticks out. All right, here's another point that sticks out. But think about the difference in these two points. All right, this point, this point up here that's circled in green, right? This point fits the overall trend. This point down here doesn't. Okay, so the regression line calculated with the point circled in red looks something like this. Our regression equation calculated with the point circled in green looks like this. The green regression equation looks like a little bit better representation of the overall trend. If I take this point out, we're getting better results. All right, so that tells us that this point is an influential observation. And then there's something weird going on there, right? This person, they um, must have been drinking O'Doul's or something, right? So an influential point is something that's making our results off, All right? But so we think about influential observations a little bit differently than we think about outliers in the univariate case. Right now, this point probably not an outlier in X or Y. Right, so when you're thinking about is this point an outlier, think about our scatter plot. If you're if all these points were able to just drop down and make a dot plot on the x axis, right, this person wouldn't be an outlier. What if we were able to put them over on the y axis and make a dot plot? This might be an outlier in Y. Okay, so you potentially can be an outlier, right? but not necessarily an influential point. You could also be an influential point, but not necessarily be an outlier. Okay, can you be both? Well, what about this point? All right, this person would be an outlier in X and definitely an influential point. Okay, so don't get the two confused. Outliers are more for the univariate case. Right? Influential observations are, we think about that in the context of regression. All right, so how do we know how influential something is? Right, because we know looking at scatter plots can be sort of deceiving. All right, so we want to put a number on just how influential a point is. Well, that's where this idea of residuals come in. All right, remember one of the big points of our regression line is to predict y for given values of x. But that prediction isn't always going to be perfect. Right? We may make an error. And this area, error, or this residual, is found by taking what we predicted with our line and subtracting what we actually observed. So let's kind of try to envision that with a simple scatter plot. Right. Each of these points has a vertical distance from that least squares line. Right. The point of the least squares line is to try to minimize those distances. But unless our unless our R squared and R very, very high, unless our association is very, very strong, right, that line isn't going to pass exactly through those points. So there's going to be a little bit of error. The number that quantifies that error is called our residual. So let's look at an example of calculating our residual. And so let's say we wanted to predict what's going to happen if 12 pitchers are used. So find our regression equation, plug in 12, and there we go. Okay, so looking back at our data, a game that actually used 12 pitchers, right, that was the, the twins at the Mariners, was actually 206 minutes long. Right, so we predicted, we predicted it to be 217 minutes. It was actually 206. Okay, that gives us an error or a difference of... 12 minutes. All right, so when calculating these residuals, now remember this this number, this is in minutes. But that's kind of relative to the data. Okay, so how do we know that this residual, so how do we know what is an important residual and what's not? Okay, well, these residuals will be in the units of y. How do we know it's unusual? 
examples, most softwares will calculate what's called your standardized residual. And it's essentially a z-score for your residuals. Now we know based on z-scores, the normal distribution, all that stuff, our empirical rule, anything outside of 95% we might call unusual. So outside of two standard deviations or a z-score of plus or minus two. And anything outside of three right, is, is very unusual, assuming normality. Okay, another thing you might see here is instead of your standardized residuals, another thing you might see is called your studentized residuals. And that's just a similar idea, but, but using the T distribution instead. All right, so I've been using Minitab here to do this. Okay, so how do we calculate these residuals in Minitab? Well, by default, in Minitab, after you've stored your model, right, you don't even have to do anything. The default output will give you any, any observations that are weird. So I want to show you how Minitab how many tab looks at these. Okay, so we've got here the number observation, we've got the time of game, we've got their x value, we have their actual residuals that were calculated, right? and then we have the standardized residuals. Alright, so maybe you're thinking, so here, but here we see r's and we see x's. Alright, here, this one we noticed that's not a very big residual. Right, but we see an X. Here, this is a large residual. It's outside of 2. This is a large residual outside of 3. Here's another one, small residual, but X. So what's happening here? Right, let's look at this in mini tab. So here's my, my line, my scatter plot with my line in mini tab. So remember our output, what it was telling us here. Okay, so it was flagging observation 37. So let's take like this one kind of looks out of place. Let's see what that is. All right, that's observation 37. So it kind of sticks out from the trend. Its residual is 3.24. I think it would be fair to say that this point is an influential point. All right, what about say this one? It definitely sticks out. It fits the trend. That's number 13. Right, so that has a little X by it. It's telling me that's an outlier in X. It's also saying number 23 is an outlier in X. Maybe that's this. Yeah, that's this one. Outlier in X, not an outlier from the trend. What about this one? Or maybe that's number so it's number 23 that we're looking for. Now something else to think about, it does tell us that we have two large residuals. One's, one's a large positive and one's a large negative. Now the positive one is a little bit bigger than the negative, but in some cases, if we have an influential point, if we have a large positive influential point, we have a large negative influential point, well, what's going to happen there? They're kind of going to cancel each other out, right? So in some cases, if we've got two that cancel each other out, maybe our results are okay. Um, but if I have just like one really big positive or one really big negative, maybe there's something weird going on there and we could get better results without it. Now what if I want to see not just the concerning residuals? What if I want to see all of my residuals? That's possible to do in Minitab. Okay, so once you've gone to stat, regression, you've stored your line plot here, Right, when, when I go to fit regression model, okay, when we go here to our results button, fits and diagnostics, it says only for unusual by default. If we want to say for all observations, there we go. Okay. And it'll calculate all of our residuals here for every observation. So if that's if that's something you want to do, it is doable here in Minitab. Okay, so so those are kind of some more finer points of regression, residuals, extrapolation. Right? So this is regression is very important and very useful tools, right? but they're also very easily misused. Okay, so when you're doing regression, make sure you pay attention to all the sort of ancillary stuff in order to get good results. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.